First of all, to navigate to the Theta system, please go to the www.theta.um.ic website. You will land on the home page of the Theta system. Please enter your username and the password. After that, you have to click on the login button. Then you will be redirected to the summary panel. Uh, to translate a document, please click on the translate on navigation panel. Enter the title of the translation into the title text box. Then please enter the text to be translated into the website text area as shown in the screen. By using a mouse or keyboard shortcut, it is possible to paste a copied text into the text area as well. Upload buttons can be used to select a Unicode text file rather than typing or pasting the text. I am going to upload a text file, so I am using the text upload icon. Click on it. Then you have to select a text file. After that, press the open button. So the document will be uploaded into the, the left hand side text area. After that, make sure the translation direction is correct. I am going to translate from Sinhala language to English. Click on translate button as shown in the screen to translate the source text into the target language. The translated text will be appear in the text area to the right. You may use the export to word button to export the review text into Microsoft Word document or, or else you can download it as text document. See the formatting tool provided at the right side text box to the format the translated text. Also you can edit the translated text. This translation can be either saved as draft to complete later by clicking on save draft icon, submit for review by clicking on submit for review icon, or else you can use the offline translation feature to translate the document offline, so it will save your time. Now I will go to the my translation window. Interface Interface shown in the screen is the all translation done. Translator user has the privilege to view, edit, or delete them using the icon to the right of the each translation listed. I'll go to the My Profile window. My Profile page interface shown in the screen can be used to change the password by clicking the Change Password button and the changing the profile details by clicking the Change Profile Details icon. Once all password and the new password twice are entered in the respective text box. Click on the update password button to update the password. When change profile details button is clicked, a new selection will appear to the enter new details except the username and the roles. Once you enter the latest details to the form, it can be saved by Clicking on Update button.
System management page will be opened as shown in this screen. It is the list of suggestions from system management. This window allows you to communicate with the system administrator if you if the system is not working properly or if it suggests improvements to the system, this window can be used to report it. Thank you for using CETA translation system. Hi everyone, I am here today to present fine-tuning a self-supervised multilingual sequence-to-sequence -sequence model for extremely low-resource neural machine translation known as NMT, presented by Sarubi Tilaynathan, Surangika Ranatunga and Sanat Jayasena from University of Moratua. By this research, we propose fine-tuning a self-supervised multilingual sequence-to-sequence -sequence pre trained model for extremely low-resource domain-specific NMT. We are the first to implement and demonstrate the viability of non-English-centric complete fine-tuning on multilingual sequence-to-sequence -sequence pre trained models. To demonstrate the fine-tuning on extremely low-resource setting, we select Sinhala, Tamil and English languages in the domain of official government documents. What is machine translation? Machine translation is translating automatically one human language to another using a computer. In the recent past, artificial neural network has successfully applied to machine translation known as neural machine translation, NMT. NMT is implemented as a sequence-to-sequence -sequence neural model which consists of an encoder and a decoder. The encoder is used to encode the input sentences to the fixed length vector representation. And the decoder gets the fixed length vector representation and decode is to the target output sentences. NMT is known as data hungry which requires a large amount of parallel data to produce a high-quality translation. However, finding such large parallel data is challenging for morphologically rich low-resource languages. We consider a language as a low-resource when the parallel data is below than 500,000. If the parallel data is even less than 100,000, we categorize it as extremely low-resource languages. Instead of relying on this parallel data, we can take advantage of monolingual data, which is largely available. Using this large-scale monolingual data, we can learn a good universal language representation by capturing linguistic characteristic, lexical meaning, synthetic and semantic structures. Later, we can use this already trained known as pre-trained model to initialize NMT rather than training a NMT from scratch using large-scale parallel data. Overview of pre-training and fine-tuning. Let's assume we have multiple monolingual data from multiple different languages. Using that, we can train a denoising autoencoder and get a pre-trained model. Then, in the case of NMT, when we want to train a single Tamil neural machine translation, first we initialize this NMT with a pre-trained model weights for embedding decoders and encoders weights rather than training a NMT with a random initialization. Then we continue to train the NMT. This process is referred to as fine-tuning. Studies shows that extracting and sharing this learned representation with our downstream tasks such as for NMT question answering, named entity recognition leads to the significant performance gains due to the knowledge transfer from these pre-trained models. Currently available multilingual pre-trained sequence-to-sequence -sequence models are MBART, MT5 and MT6. These models are trained as a complete sequence-to-sequence -sequence model in a self-supervised manner using multiple monolingual data. Hence, we can fully initialize both the encoder and the decoder of an NMT using this pre-trained model. In particular, MBART has shown promising results for supervised and self unsupervised neural machine translation. Thus, we choose MBART in this study. 
Before moving to MBAR, let's look at BART. In 2019, a research team from Facebook trained a denoising autoencoder as a sequence-to-sequence -sequence model in a self-supervised manner. BART is trained only on large-scale English monolingual data. Monolingual data is noised and fed as the source task to a bidirectional encoder. Then the original monolingual data is fed as the target task to a left to right auto aggressive decoder. At the end of the training, the model can take the partially noise input and predict the denoised words to recover the original sentences. This process is refers as self self supervised learning where training data labels are generated automatically. MBART is a multilingual BART which extends the pre-training into multiple monolingual languages, unlike BART only on English. Like BART, all the monolingual data are corrupted with a noising function and fed as shown here. By giving a language tag for each language which included in the pre-trained model, it's trained as a single model as a denoising autoencoder that maps the correct corrupted sentences to original sentences where they are derived from. Initializing an empty model with MBART. So far, most of all the MBART related experiments are English centric. The tested language pair include English either in the source or the target side in bilingual and multilingual fine tuning. Bilingual fine-tuning means at a time only one pair of di translation direction was fine-tuned. Multilingual fine-tuning where at a time multiple language pairs are jointly fine-tuned. Even in the multilingual fine-tuning case, English is used as a pivot language. Some studies considered not English-centric fine-tuning where only one language pair is included in the pre-trained model. Our motivation is to examine the full potential of this pre-trained model. For that, we should consider their performance on non-English centric translation where both languages are included. It is mainly because many languages are underrepresented in this pre-trained model, such as to train a BART model, 55,000 millions of English tokens has been used, while only 243 million of tokens for Sinhala and 595 tokens for Tamil has been used. NMD researchers have been conducted among Sri Lankan languages mainly focusing on vanilla bilingual models such as Sinhala Tamil, Sinhala English likewise. Among all the proposed models, recently introduced transformer model with white pair encoding shows effectiveness in the low resource setting with improved results. Even though this model shows better translation for low resource languages, still it was much lower than what NMT could obtain for high resource language pairs. This is clearly indicating the demand for high quality machine translation for Sri Lankan languages. Our main goal is to fine tune this multilingual pre-trained MBART model in an extremely low resource domain specific NMT where the number of parallel sentences is less than 100,000. We are the first to conduct end-to-end -to -end fine tuning which includes both languages in a non-English centric manner with the latest MBART 50 model. We train six bilingual models through the pairwise combination among Sinhala Tamil English languages. Our dataset is mainly from Sri Lankan government official document. Dataset approximately contains 0.25 million tokens per languages, which is very low compared to the pre-trained model token. English sentences were tokenized using Moses toolkit, while Sinhala and Tamil use specially designed internal tokenizer. We use sentence based model learned over monolingual data used in MBART containing of 250,000 subword tokens. We take this BART pre-trade models to initialize both encoder and the decoder. For example, when we 
want to train Sinhala English translation system, first we initialize the encoder with the pre-trained weights of Sinhala language from MBART's encoder. And then we initialize the decoder weights with the MBART pre-trained decoder weights of English language. Then we start to train our Sinhala English translation model by giving Sinhala sentences as a source input and corresponding English sentences as a target output. We followed the MBART architecture, a sequence -a sequence transformer based model with 12 layers of encoder and decoder. For training purpose, we use FastCQ tool. We trained up to 100,000 updates and selected the final model based on the validation likelihood. We consider four baseline. First is phrase based statistical machine translation which is proposed by Fernando and ETL which train using Moses toolkit. Second is LSTM based NMT where we use two layers of bidirectional LSTM as the encoder and two layer of LSTM as the decoder as proposed by Centrich for low resource NMT. Then the LSTM based ensemble model where we select top four model from LSTM based NMT. The last one is the transformer baseline which is state of the art main baseline. Here we adopt the transformer model with white pair encoding proposed by Fonseca. Let's move to the results section. All the results are reported in the blue score. We observe significant performance gains for the bilingual fine tuning on all six cases. Most importantly on non-English centric such as CETA and TASI, we are able to obtain significant improvement. This demonstrates the usefulness of the pre-trained models for low resource NMT, where it is difficult to find large scale parallel data to train NMT from scratch. We observe when the English is in the target site, always higher results than when the English is in the source site. We strongly be believe it is because English is benefited by large scale monolingual data during, during pre-training such as 55 million tokens. Even though the pre-trained model used 595 million Tamil token which is higher than 243 millions of tokens for Sinhala, Sinhala tends to perform well when being on target compared to Tamil. We believe it is because Tamil is more inflectional and complex than Sinhala. These are few sample outputs. Here we can see MBART fine-tuned model translated English sentences are more accurate and meaningful complete sentences than the transformer baseline. In some cases like this, it fully translated without errors. Even in the non-English centric translation, Sinhala Tamil translation also, our proposed model can identify proper joint characters and translate the sentences correctly than the transformer model. In conclusion, for the low resource NMT, one promising approach to transfer the knowledge is fine tuning the already trained multilingual denoising models such as MBART. These models were effective for low resource languages, low resource English centric machine translation as per previous studies. We took this line of research even further and shows its viability for an extremely low resource domain specific case. More importantly, we showed that this model is robust enough to obtain significant improvement for non-English centric translation even, those, even though those languages are underrepresented in the pre-trained model. As per our obtained results, we can conclude that the translation accuracy heavily depends on the amount of monolingual data used to train the multilingual denoising pre-trained model. When the target language has benefited by more monolingual data in the pre-training, the fine-tuning results is better than on source side. When the amount of monolingual data is roughly equal, the fine-tuned results depend on the target language complexity. 
as the future work we plan to fine tune multiple language pairs together at the same time jointly using mbat which is called as multilingual fine tuning also we plan to experiment with a very recently introduced mt5 on extremely low resource non english centric neural machine translation thank you improving back translation with iterative filtering and data selection for sinhala english nmt Neural machine translation requires large parallel data sets to perform better. Hence, for low resource language pairs, NMP is a challenge due to the scarcity of parallel training data. Sinhala English is one such language pair which doesn't have a large parallel corpus for training. To augment the uh, parallel data available for low resource language pairs, a largely available monolingual corpora can be used. One such method of data augmentation using monolingual corpora is back translation. Back translation is the process of translating the target site monolingual data by an already uh, trained uh, machine translation system in the target to uh, source translation direction. And then combining the generated synthetic uh, source sentences with their corresponding monolingual target sentences to produce a synthetic parallel corpus. Then this synthetic parallel corpus is combined with already existing authentic parallel data to create an augmented parallel corpus. then this augmented parallel corpus is used to train the forward translation system one main advantage of the back, of back translation is that it does not require the existing model architecture to change low quality data can degrade the performance of the nmt system badly however uh, so methods to improve the quality of back translation uh, systems have been introduced out of these approaches we picked uh, three approaches which stood out for us iterative back translation data selection and filtering these approaches individually improve the quality of back translation models mainly for the low resource language pairs we combine these three approaches to obtain synthetic parallel data of a better quality motivation even though monolingual corpora are largely available uh, in sinhala and english language uh, languages back translation has never been employed for sinhala english language pair although there are many ways to improve back translation no research has attempted to combine three or more of these methods to further improve back translation so the objectives of uh, this research are implement a back translation algorithm for sinhala english by improving and combining the following uh, existing techniques uh, to further improve back translation the techniques are iterative back translation filtering and data selection and use the generated synthetic data to improve sinhala english nmt over the baseline which is trained only on the original parallel data the systems trained with additional monolingual or synthetic data have a higher proportion of novel words which indicates that additional monolingual data improves the word level fluency of the nmt systems iterative back translation is the process of training the two back translation systems in target to source and source to target directions multiple times this process is carried out until no improvement is observed in both the translation directions in source to target direction and uh, target to source direction as you can see in this diagram data selection refers to selecting the sentences that are closer to the domain of interest than other sentences in the large monolingual corpus transductive data selection algorithm uses the test set as the seed and retrieves sentences from a large monolingual corpus that are closest to this seed there are two transductive data selection algorithms infrequent and granular query algorithm inr and feature decoy algorithm fda inr it extracts sentences containing engrams which are infrequent in the seed fda selects sentences by giving priority to sentences containing many engrams from the seed but penalizing engrams which have been selected several times filtering techniques aim at filtering out low quality synthetic sentences that degrade the performance of the nmt system it involves computing the similarity score between a synthetic sentence and its monolingual counterpart using a sentence level similarity matrix this sentence level similarity matrix can be divided into two main sections the first one is sentence level similarity matrix using surface information of sentences one such matrix is sentence level blue the other uh, 
section is the sentence level similarity matrix using distributed representations of sentences. We identified three such metrics. The first one is average alignment similarity matrix. The second one is the maximum alignment similarity matrix. And the third one is sent by a metric. Out of these uh, uh, four approaches, uh, sent blue uh, uh, average alignment similarity and MAS uh, use round trip translations. That means they compare the monolingual target sentence and the synthetic target sentence. But sent by M compare the synthetic uh, source sentence and the uh, monolingual target sentence. We filled back translation. So this is uh, iterative back translation is performed in both translation directions simultaneously with an additional step of filtering synthetic sentences and adding the filtered synthetic parallel corpus to the authentic parallel corpus. The performance improvement obtained in one translation direction is used to improve the performance in the other translation direction. The other approaches to improve back translation are tag back translation, noise back translation, sampling, uh, and using both source side and target side monolingual data. Both tag back translation and noise back translation are used to signal the NMT model that synthetic parallel sentences are different from original parallel sentences. In tag back translation, a tag is attached to each synthetic sentence in the source language. In uh, noise back translation, noise is added to the synthetic parallel sentences. Sampling is generating uh, multiple source sentences uh, per target sentence to average out errors in synthetic uh, sentences. Apart from these three techniques, using a combination of both target side and uh, source side monolingual data uh, also improves uh, the performance of back translation systems. So our experiments uh, uh, starts with training the baseline NMT model using uh, the uh, par original parallel data in the domain of official government documents. And we train Van La back, tra back translation model on augmented parallel data generated using back translating monolingual data in the target language. And for iterative back translation, we iterated back translation systems only uh, four times because the, uh, at each iteration, the results kept fluctuating. And filtered back translation was also uh, executed. And, uh, uh, and iterative uh, filtered back translation was followed by that. And uh, for data selection, uh, we use INR and FDNR algorithms with a threshold value of 0 0.7 and we combined iterative filter back translation with IFTA and INR algorithms separately to further improve the results. Uh, when the back translation as I mentioned before is uh, generating the synthetic source sentences using uh, the monolingual target sentences with the uh, model trained on uh, target to source um, uh, direction and uh, the, we, uh, uh, the generated synthetic uh, parallel sentences are added to the original parallel uh, sentences to augment the parallel data set which is then used to train the model in the source to target direction. So iterative back translation is doing that uh, vanilla back translation process in both the translation directions until no improvement is obtained in either of the translation directions. So it uh, so we uh, iterate until uh, no improvement is uh, observed in the source to target language direction or a target to uh, source language direction. So that is what iterative back translation does. So in filtering, we take the target language sentences and uh, translate it into the source language using a target source uh, NMT model. And then uh, we generate sentence embedding of the uh, source uh, language and sentence embeddings of the target language. So we have uh, sentence embeddings of the monolingual target sentence and the synthetic source sentence. We uh, compute the cosine similarity between these sentence embeddings. And if this sentence embedding uh, is uh, higher than a certain threshold, if this cosine similarity is higher than a threshold, certain threshold that we use, uh, the sentence gets uh, picked uh, to the filtered uh, parallel corpus, filtered synthetic parallel corpus. If not, it gets filtered up. So after um, filtering all the sentences, we generate the filtered uh, synthetic parallel corpus, which is then added to the original parallel corpus to augment the parallel corpus. And then it is, and the uh, uh, NMT modeling source to target direction is um, trained on this augmented parallel corpus. 
in data selection we use uh, the uh, training uh, data in the source language and translate it in the target language using the source to target nmt model and then we use this as the translated uh, sentences training set as, as, as the uh, seed set and then we use the monolingual target uh, monolingual sentences in the target language and then we feed them to the INR and FDA algorithms. And if the uh, score of each sentence is higher than a certain threshold, the sentences get picked to the, uh, uh, to uh, get picked. So uh, that is what happens in INR and FDA. And uh, with uh, iterative filtered back translation, let's consider these single sentences. They are translated into English and then sentence embeddings are created. This is iteration zero. And uh, the uh, scores of the sentence, these two sentences are these. So this gets, uh, the second one gets uh, filtered out because its score is uh, lower than the threshold. We took, uh, let's say the threshold is 0 0.3. So it is not uh, higher than 0 0.3, it, it gets filtered out. So in the next iteration, because the NMT model that is used to back translate that sentence pair, that sentence is better than the NMT model that we used before because it was trained on filtered data. Uh, this sentence gets uh, translated uh, uh, much uh, better. So uh, this time it has a score of 0 0.7, which uh, which is then picked to the sentence, uh, picked to the filtered uh, synthetic parallel sentences because uh, the score is higher than 0 0.3. So uh, that is what happens in iterative back trans uh, filtered back translation. So uh, iterative this process is uh, executed until uh, no improvement is observed in either the trans either translation directions. So iterative filtered back translation plus FDA and IRR is we use FDA and INR recovery algorithm to select data from the monolingual data from the target site. Then use the best model obtained by iterative filtered back translation to translate these. Uh, to the source language and added the generated synthetic parallel corpus to the existing authentic parallel corpus and train the data. <coughs> Our baseline model is a use uh, encoder decoder network with a two layer bidirectional long short term memory as the encoder and the NLSTM as the decoder. After pre-processing steps, train, uh, we train the network with an early stopping criteria with the patience of five valid steps. Also, we use both checkpoint ensembling and model ensembling by training four models. Uh, and uh, for the ensemble model, we select the, the top four models from the saved checkpoints based on the performance on the validation set. So we can see that vanilla back trans if we sing her to English direction, the vanilla back translation outperforms the baseline model. Best results for filtered back translation is obtained with a threshold value of 0 0.45. There's a slight drop from the uh, vanilla back translation model because the uh, <coughs> synthetic parallel data set uh, uh, drops from 42k sentences to 25k sentences. So uh, for uh, uh, with iterative filtered back translation at iteration one, an improvement of four blue score or vanilla back translation model can be uh, seen and when we combine FTA al algorithm with iterative filtered back translation, which is the uh, uh, first model at iteration one, so we can observe a plus three blue score improvement over the baseline NMT uh, baseline NMT model and a plus one point nine three blue score improvement over the vanilla back translation model. And if we look at the English to Sinhala translation direction, uh, vanilla back translation model. Uh, <laughs> fail to outperform the baseline model. This is due to the monolingual uh, English and uh, Sinhala uh, corpus we use, monolingual Sinhala corpus, which contains uh, sentences which are very large, which get which did not get uh, translated uh, correctly to English. So that is why uh, the score uh, actually dropped from the baseline NMT model. So uh, best results for filtered back translation is obtained at the threshold value of 0 0.45. It's out, it outperformed baseline model as well as the vanilla back translation model. And with iterative filtered back translation at iteration three, the highest uh, score was observed, uh, <coughs> which is a uh, 2.15 blue score gain over the vanilla back translation uh, model. And combining FD algorithm with iterative filtered back translation, a plus 2.22 blue score gain over the vanilla back translation model and a plus 0.33 blue score gain over the baseline model was observed. Uh, it is evident that back translation improves translation performance in extremely low resource domain specific settings when a large monolingual corpus is used. 
the generator synthetic sentences have a tendency to contain errors due to the suboptimal nature of the nmt system used to translate the monolingual corpus so we identified iterative back translation data selection and filtering approaches to alleviate this problem a considerable gain in the blue score can be observed when filtering and iterative back translation are combined combining all three approaches gives the best result and a significant improvement for both sinhala to english and english to sinhala translation directions for future work we uh, are going to experiment with fast text and labsai models in place of laser for filtering and we also uh, uh, are going to use comparable uh, monolingual corpora to compare the impact of back translation in the two translation directions synmorphy a morphology analysis of for singhal language by kalindu kumar singh gyan das in the herat from university of monitor singhal spoken mainly in sri lanka is a morphologically rich indo aryan language in addition to nouns and verbs which have rich morphology some morphology is also observed in other parts of speech when studying a language understanding its morphology is very crucial the sing in singhal features such as person number gender the grammatical cases are encoded in morphemes and they may be identified by morphological analysis so what is morphology morphology is the study of words of a language and how they are formed morphemes are the smallest elements in a language and they cannot be further divided into more meaningful elements for example let's take the stem cat and the suffix s to create the word cats in singhala the suffixes and prefixes are added to the stem to create words with new meanings or change the class of the word for example to the noun lemma minis we add the suffix a which indicates the masculine singular definite and nom nominative or accusative form we get the result minis are what are morphological analyzers a morphological analyzer is a tool which analyzes words according to their morphology they map between the surface form and the lexical form a, mo a morphological synthesizer performs the reverse operation given the lexical form of a word it produces the surface form there are two major approaches for building morphological analyses the rule based approach in this approach the list of word stems are compiled and divided into classes and then the morphology rules are defined for each class in deep learning based approaches a set of words or sentences are labeled with synthetic information and fed into the deep learning network to build a morphological model for the language we use finite state transducers commonly for building rule based morphological analyses mainly because derivations of a stem to form the words can easily be represented using nfst we can represent the morphological rules by of many languages by fst which maps between the surface and the lexical form of a word as you can see in the diagram this fst can work both ways so these can act as the analyzer as well as the synthesizer when we talk about the morphology analysis for singhala the earliest attempt on singhala morphology analyzer was done by herat and others in 1989 the work was more focused on analysis than building analyzer the prominent work was done by Vir viraj valgam and others from ltrl lab and they had initiated the singhala morphology analyzer the kumar singh and others have developed the singhala verb morphology kal analyzer using forma their work was based on the work done by dilshani and dals on verb morphology hetige and karunanand has also developed a morphology analyzer for singhala but we could not find the public data we collected data from three main sources the first one the vocabulary compiled by ltrl the work done by viraj valgama and others words extracted from the concise singhala dictionary and the words from our unique word list when we talk about the structure of the morphology analysis our morphology analyzer has four major components the lexicons which describes the vocabulary of stem morphemes lexical tags which define the part of speech and morphosynthetic features of a word the rules defining how the lexicons and the morphemes are combined together we use lexi and forma to handle to develop our fsts lexicons specific rules for each class for each class and morphemes are given in lexi files as you can see on the left hand side the general rules are handled in forma files we started building the noun morphology analyzer the nouns were classified into 
classes in four categories the masculine feminine nude and the uncountables based on the work done by ltra each category was divided in into classes based on the final vowel of the lemma separate classes were defined for the words where lemmas ends it with back vowel a front vowel a mid vowel or a pure consonant then we identified the rules of concatenation apart from the default concatenation we identified three major rules first one deletion the final vowel or the consonant of the stem is deleted before concatenating the morpheme so we implemented the former rules to handle this rule as well in the diagram when we see the del v tag or the function we remove the fine the final e of the word similarly the substitution is the other one character is replaced by another the common case is lengthening of a vowel for example let's take the word lami c and it may be lengthened to construct the singular form lami c this was handled first deleting the first final vowel and then adding e to the word similarly we have developed more for former rules for this substitution as well termination the final consonant is duplicated here this is a very crucial one we implemented for example let's take the lemma ab in this case when r is added to ab the first it has to delete the final vowel and then germinate the final consonant so we have defined the del v to delete the final vowel and gem rule where germinate the final consonant when the final consonant is half nasal the germination rule produces a nasal and and the base consonant so we have defined rules for that as well using former then we comes to verbs lemmas and stems the lemma of a verb is generally the indicative form without the trailing lemma however if the lemma ends with a vowel such as e or a this is dele deleted in constructing the stem thus the stem may not be the same as the lemma but allows the correct morphological analysis analysis to be performed we developed or constructed stem 2 why some verb forms including past forms in volitive forms etc are constructed by first modifying the lemma and then adding suffixes to that we constructed this stem 2 by fronting the vowel in the stem according to the following rule a uh, to a a to a e u to e so on the vowel modifiers following the consonants are also modified the same way but if the letters are already front vowels we do not change we compile list of words from the list we listed previously we believe that we included almost all the verbs in contemporary use but uh, there are in definite number of compound verbs why we could not add them all but we attempted to include those with com commonly written as single words as well we divided verbs into two major classes regular and irregular a uh, class a class e class r class and the ver verbs ending with ka and la and then we have irregular forms as well when developing finite verbs we identified sets of second level inflection well, rules on the right left hand side you can see the rule sets for second level inflections on the right hand side you can see sample inflectional rules for a given rule set so why do we need second level inflections these second level rules are called ap appropriate modifiers from first level rule files so for the, let's take the sec this example when this va past rule set is called upon before calling that we create the stem 2 after creating stem 2 we go to the second level inflections similarly in third and fourth cases we go to second level rules we implemented the non finite verbs in the same way we identified 12 types of non finite verbs and we observed num some non finite verbs are formed from stem and others from stem 2 so we we used the sec two level inflectional rules to handle this as well in addition to the regular inflection some verbs have irregular forms these were handled by adding additional specific rules in addition to nouns and verbs we hand handled 
adjectives and adverbs as well these were classified according to the morphemes they combined with we handled particles with our analyzer though particles do not show inflections they may concatenate with previous words or two or more particles may be concatenated to form a single word we identified these lists and included in our vocabulary we introduced a guesser as well if the word is out of our vocabulary or the guesser analyzer is, is not able to handle that word the guesser is called upon the guesser is also a final state transducer and the final characters of the words are considered if they follow a non morphology the word is guessed even if it is not in the vocabulary so when we talk about the input and the output of the zin morphy the zin morphy is a word by word analyzer the input text is tokenized first and the fst is analyzes the word and give the output of the analysis so for example if we give the word anganavata we can get the all possible analysis for the word anganavata we tested zin morphy thoroughly first we tested zin morphy with the most common to 20000 words in the list of unique word list compiled by fernando and das the system correctly handles 81.3 of the most common words and we observed that there were no incorrect tags after manual inspection we also tested the system with 1000 random words taken from number of sources listed from those 1000 words the analyzer was able to correctly tag 800 and 852 words given an accuracy of 85.2 with the results we observed that zin uh, morphy contains correct spellings of each word however we observed that some words are frequently spelled in other ways as well there's much diversity in word separation also we we attempted to handle some of these cases but we need more work we observed that zin morphy sometimes provide analysis relating to uncommon stems and strings such as k and k appear in unique word list however these are generally considered suffixes not separated from previous words some words may be written either the short or the long form of a vowel for example ammat and nammat we attempted to handle these cases and in most of the cases we succeeded but we need more work to complete the work In conclusion the current version of sin morphy handles approximately 24000 lemmas comprising of nouns verbs adjectives adverbs and particles the vocabulary can be easily increased by adding words to these class files the analyzer has been useful in many nlp projects including grammar error checking machine translation spell checking and sentiment analysis as well the tool also can be used for data generation We would like to thank Viraj Velgam and the LTR lab fr of from UCSC for the data provided and we also like to thank Saman Paramuna for his valuable assistance. This research was supported by a head operation of Ministry of Education funded by the World Bank. So uh, here's the list of references. You can test our tool at the given at the URL nlp-tools.um.lk/sinmorphy and if you have any further questions oh, you can contact me at kalindukay@um.lk thank you very much